How's it going, Reef Keepers? Hope everybody's having a great Saturday. I wanted to uh, just talk about flow a little bit in this video because I've made some tweaks to my flow recently uh, due to changing my, my backup battery situation. I now no longer have it connected to a wave maker. I've got it connected to my return pump so that I can move my sump water. And that allowed me to remove a power head that was hiding back behind the overflow box on this side and kind of shift the power heads that are over there. Um, and I added a power head on that side down low. So I'm going to kind of go through where my power heads are and kind of how I treat flow in a mixed reef, right? Um, I will note, you see a couple Duncan corals here that are a little bit closed up. That's a result of uh, changing my kelk wasser dosing schedule. And it was funny which corals really didn't appreciate that, but they are bouncing back right now. So uh, SPS is happy though. So I have in this tank right here, a Nero five, right here a Nero five. On this side kind of is the main driver of the flow, a Nero seven, and then kind of obscured down here is a Jabao uh dlw 20 and the dlw 20 i think is just barely maybe by like a 100 gallons per hour weaker at max flow rate than a nero 5 so they're pretty directly comparable and by the way i found that dlw to push plenty of water and be dead silent and reliable in operation so far so hasn't been on there very long but i'm quite happy but the way that i treat flow in a mixed reef where I've got LPS corals down low, right? And then I have SPS hard coral up top, which I think is generally how people are gonna do it. Now, every, every tank's gonna be different, right? My tank is a four foot long reef tank. I believe it's 22 or 23 inches deep, um, front to back, and in that kind of depth. And then as far as how tall it is, like the water line's probably sitting at like 21 inches in this tank to just kind of compare it to your own tank. And again, the longer you go, the wider you go, you know, the taller the tank is, <laughs> the different flow solutions are gonna come into the equation, right? But as far as tanks that are set up kind of like what I've got here, and you got your rock work generally set up the same way, here's how I do it, right? So the Nero 5s, as you can see, I have them up pretty high in the tank. I have them mounted. Like you can see that Nero 5 right there in the front. It's mounted up three quarters of the way up, right? Similarly, the Nero 7, it is mounted pretty high up. It is not dead center. It is, it's about three quarters of the way up, maybe a little less, maybe two thirds of the way up. So I kind of elevate the primary power heads up higher. And I do that because I want to hit those SPS corals across the top of the reef with a good bit of turbulent chaotic flow like what you would find on a reef, but I don't want to blast delicate LPS corals away that I have in the mid area of the tank or down low in the tank, right? That's not what they appreciate. They don't want their polyps getting battered the way that SPS coral are designed to get battered. Therefore, I move the power heads up. And then I sort of, if you can, if you look closely, you'll see I have angled at a slight up angle, these power heads, right? So in addition to having them placed higher, they're also angled up. And uh, the Nero line has those magnets that have the little concave section where you can get like, I forget, 15 or 20 degrees of play. So I have this uh, this Nero seven shooting straight toward the overflow box and angled up. I have the two Nero fives kind of angled in as well, which is harder to tell, but they are angled slightly inward, which creates this kind of central meeting point where you've got these three primary streams of water. And I'm running all those by the way, at like 75% intensity at their highest. And at their lowest, I have them running at like 55%. So within that 20% range, you're get, I have it at maximum, like uh, what's it called? Maximum randomness in, within that percentile range of intensity. So all day long, they are constantly, those three Neros are ramping 
between 55% and 75% strength, which again is what you would find on a lot of reefs where you have this like, you know, ebb and flow in the intensity and direction of the water. And that allows for sometimes the Nero's pushing harder than the Nero 7. Sometimes the Nero 5s push harder than the Nero 7. Sometimes the Nero 7s pushing harder than the Nero 5s, right? Sometimes one Nero 5 is firing super strong while the other two are, are a little bit, um, you know, running lower. And that creates a whole bunch of differentiation in flow pattern in the tank, which is what those SPS corals like. And by the way, LPS corals like it too. And the residual flow that is created from this turbulent zone that occurs in the middle comes down lower and hits the SPS coral and kind of kind of keeps things different for them too. Kind of kind of keeps the flow patterns mixed down low as well, right? Um, I will mention last the reason why I added this Jabal pump down low and just have it I just have it directly blowing across the back of the tank is that one the flow patterns do generally shake out that in this corner the elegance kind of gets pushed one way. So I wanted some flow to come wrap around and down which I have noticed the elegance is not getting pushed so hard in that corner, right? Um, also, it keeps the whole back area of the tank cleaned out because detritus would settle along the back side of the tank a little more than the front side. I could notice it. Um, so there's a little more algae buildup from time to time in the back. But after adding that, I really have no like, you know, pest algae buildup back there at all. And the fish that like to get, you know, poop back there, um, it just gets blasted out and back up into the water column. So it was a good addition and it just adds some flow differentiation. I'm sure you could take it or leave it as long as you keep your tank, you know, well cleaned and maintenance. But uh, yeah, I just added that little bit. But that's how I do flow in this tank. And by and large, again, you know, it, it makes it seem like I should eat my words. But because I just ad adjusted that Kelkwasser uh, dosing schedule... I know that these Duncans closed up because they got angry about that. Um, you can see the rest of the corals are plenty happy. Acro frag here, SPS frags from uh, TSA are all doing great. I ordered some from there. Seeing good growth on everything. This A can gets decimated by the fox face, so we're just going to pretend that's not there. Um, but yeah, the corals that typically are associated with like high higher level difficulty in the hobby <laughs> are all super happy right now and i've got a couple angry lps because of that uh, kelkwasser um you know that kelkwasser uh scheduling shift but yeah everything seems to be quite happy with this approach to flow in my tank so and it has been for quite some time by the way this is not this is not new i've been doing this for probably a year and I have not had enough reason to change it because consistently everything seems so happy with this flow pattern. So again, flow is going to be drastically different depending on a million different factors, coral placement, coral type, rockscape shape, uh, tank dimensions, you know, all sorts of considerations to take into uh, account here. But this is just how I do it. I just figured I'd add that to the, uh, the body of general knowledge. So Take it as you will. Have a good one, guys.